Well, we finally made it to the final episode of Ruby, Volume 4. Now, I really like this final episode. It's good, it wraps things up, and it does leave things for what can we expect in Volume 5. Now, before I get to my overall thoughts on the entire volume, let me start off with the thing I like, and that is the boss fight between Team Ranger versus the Horseman Grimm. And yes, I am calling the Horseman Grimm because I have no idea what this thing called, but until then, I'm calling the Horseman Grimm. And man, this was the boss level boss fight. Now, if you guys remember the first episode when they showed off Team Ranger's uh, teamwork abilities, that was all fun and games. This is where the stakes are that much high. You know, Uncle Crow's on deathbed store because of the poison. Uh, they had to make sure that he is safe from being attacked by the Horseman Grimm. Our heroes are basically struggling to beat this thing because it is showed that this thing is hard to kill because his main attack is the stretchy arms that has is able to slap around our heroes left and right. And this is also an emotional turmoil for Ren as we've been revealed that this is the thing that killed Ren's parents. So it's up to his obligation to try to avenge his parents' death. But he does not do this in the best idyllic way, which results into our lovely Nora trying to calm him down and remember that that she's here, he's here, our team is here, we can't work together to take this thing down. And he did. He came up with the best strategy. Uh, there was a lot, the fight choreography was great throughout the whole fight. One of my favorite uh, combos was seeing Nora and Ruby team, teaming together to add a nice blow to, to the Grim. Uh, they also showed off one of the upgrades that John had with his sword and shield, basically his shield combined with his sword becomes a much bigger sword and applies more cutting power, which was awesome and a great way to show off John's uh, progresses as a character. Uh, and the best part was how Ren dealt with the final blow. He still had as far as a knife, and while the Ren members of Team Ranger pinned the Grim down, he basically cuts off one arm saying this is for my mother, cuts off the other arm, this is my father, slashes the grim with the through the chest, said this is all the people you killed, and in a nice little way and this, and this is for me. Boom, the grim is defeated, and basically, and that was it. Now our heroes basically were rescued by Mistral, soldiers of Mistral as they were kind of checking out the disturbance of this band in town because they said they saw smoke, and Uncle Crow is safe as they arrive to Mistral just in time. Now, now the rest of the episode, as I said earlier, is basically was them closing things out and preparing for Volume 5. You know, as we saw, you know, Blake is planning to take over or win back uh, the White Fang to the way it was before. We know that Weiss is on her way to heading to Mistral to meet up with her older sister, Winter, and the best part was was seeing Yang in her full volume 4 outfit on her way to meet up with her sister now for the overall now the rest of the episode is basically wrapping things up and setting up stuff for volume 5 we know that Uncle Crow is recovering from his Ill illness from the poison I mean uh, we see Blake uh, making preparations for taking back the White Fang. We know Weiss is, me is on her way to, to Mistral to meet up with her big sister Winter. And the best part of all was we finally get to see Yang in her Volume 4 outfit with her, with her lovely companion Bumblebee as she makes her way to Mistral as she finally decides that she needs to meet up with her dear little sister <laughs> instead of visiting her mom. Uh, whether or not she's there to give her a big hug or a big tap in the skull with her new prosthetic arm. <laughs> but it was great. Uh, they did a lot of hints. We know that Dr. White is at Mistral. Now this is, we don't know how he's going to portray me. He's going to trick and mislead and influence uh, the King of Mistral and as King Lionheart. Which they do not reveal what he looks like. They're saying that for Volume 5. And the secret ending that they have at the end of the credits was that we finally get to see Oscar arrive in Mistral and he goes into the bar and meets up with Crow. <laughs> and basically uh, he tells Crow that I like my cane back and it's revealed that Crow knows that it's Osmond sharing this boy's body. Now we don't know how this happened to 
to Osborn, we had to wait to volume 5, but overall, I did enjoy this volume. Now, one of the drawbacks to this volume that I still think volume 3 is the best that the series has to offer was that I think they focused a little too much on backstory and it felt like more like filler and it didn't bring the overall plot of this volume. Basically, Team Ranger starts off with them going to Mistral. That was the end point of this volume. And in between, we got to meet uh, Blake's parents, which is something I like. We get to see another side of Blake that we don't normally see. That part I liked. Um, also, I like that uh, we get to see um, what's Weiss's family life living in Atlas. This is the kind of stuff that Weiss has to deal with on a day to day basis. This is why she left and Winter left as well because of the social status that becomes with Schnee. But I felt like it took away the overall plot. Like, you know, after it was such a game changer with uh, the ending of Volume 3, you know, we lost some friends and all that. But it should be more focused on that. I still enjoy it and I can't wait to see what happens in Volume 5. So, um, until, until then, we still have hopefully Ruby Chibi Season 2 will probably come out and somewhere around the summertime. So, we have a lot of things to do to entertain ourselves until then. So this concludes my review and I hope all of you enjoy this volume as as I did and hopefully we'll revisit volume five. Thanks for watching. Bye.